very typical. This is like a finished result. Uh, you bear in mind it's not a spectacular object because it is so faint. Uh, and here it here here it is. Um, this was taken over several nights uh, and responds very well to O3, but very faint in H alpha. Okay, so as you can see, uh, that's the end result. But if you look here, this is a stack of twenty, uh, and that is in O3. It's a stack of 31, so you can see it's that's quite grainy, that's a little bit smoother. And that's 31, that's 34, so again a little bit better still and a bit darker. A little bit of image shift on that one, mainly because it probably was a different night. And then from there to 44, where you can actually start to see there's a bit of a, a ring structure here as well. Uh, this is completely unprocessed. It's just the raw images taken off in FITS file, converted into JPEG. Uh, as you can see at the bottom here, this is a lot of image shift. Pretty grubby looking image, but as you'll find out, uh, the image no end. So if I click down here and I'm looking for this one here. So it's ABL6. Uh, we'll do the H alpha first. Uh, we'll leave the O3. Uh, okay, so then we go, and then on the 2nd of the 10th, there was more. This is all ABL6 in H alpha. quite a large stack there now okay so this is the H alpha one uh, you might notice it was sort of a bit inconsistent the way it was stacked but that was because there were different exposure lengths normal thing median normalized background star pattern and rotate that's uh, a frame of uh, 29 and as you can see not so bad once you actually stack them all together there's your image shift at the bottom. Stars are not too bad. I won't bother reshaping the stars. We'll keep it as it is. So now that's in there. That that will be your red channel. So click on tools, pre-processing, and then just get rid of all of this. So now what we're looking for down here is my O3. And it's exactly the same again. Uh, and I'm just to there. So this is the 03 number. Uh, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to double check, see if I've got any over here, which I have. This is a much larger file, but it was a uh, much more responsive in O3 than it was in H alpha. So this is quite a large stack here. Same again, same process. Hit OK. That's 44, a stack of 44. That's six minutes roughly. <clears throat> it's quite a bit smoother. Uh, so this one here is my uh, H alpha which is OO so then you click on color click on this and then OO being H alpha we'll put that as red and then you click OO fits and then you OK that and then this is going to be a bio color so we're going to do O1 for green and blue I tend to maximize this. Um, I never showed this before. Uh, you can auto align, and that's picked it up quite well. But I'll also uh, touch upon something else in a sec. Um, you can misalign again. Uh, 
sorry, and you can auto line. But you've also got like if you look at these stars down here, for instance, you've got you can do your alignment left, right, up, down, but you can also do a rotate, so if you get a lot of field rotation between your exposures and things like that. So if you look say at these stars here and there you can see that that is knocking the blue out and then if you sort of go there it's, it's knocking the red out separating with the green uh, and then we just go back to auto I wanted to show you that because I didn't touch on it last time we did um, trying to align the colours but you can do that as well so if you look carefully uh, that doesn't look too bad at all you can make some adjustments here not too much though it is more red than anything else again the green isn't really it's uh, because that was one of the false colours that um, it doesn't respond too much if that's just one blip it's way too bright that's about right and that's like nothing so don't bother with the green channel but the blue you can adjust if you need and then you can ok that and then you just maximize this down to there got a little bit of off color down here more blue there than over here this is something else that we can touch upon you have thing down here which is your gradient where you can move that up there and then you watch down here this is really that's like experimenting again if this doesn't really work then you try the other gradient removal tools to try and make things a little bit more smoother you keep your eye on it <coughs> obviously that's a no so like I say it's a bit of an experiment click up here on edit undo and then filters again go down to gradient and then adaptive and it's going to do a very similar thing <clears throat> as you can see about halfway through Again, keep your eye on this bit. So, no, not that one either. Linear, and that has actually smartened it up a little. Because if you notice, it's more evenly illuminated right across the actual image. If you sort of click up here and toggle between the two, you've got like a orange, reddy sort of glow there, and a blue sort of glow there. Okay, and then what I do to smooth this image out, because if you look, it's very noisy. The reason why it's so noisy is mainly because it's such a tough object to actually do. So, what we're going to do now is click on histogram and just a tweak, nothing too major. As you can see, that's not so bad and just a little bit there as well on the bottom okay and then you can close that uh, another thing that I'll do is you can see some image shift around here so I'm going to crop that so you click on image crop OK that. And then click on image again and crop. And all you do is you click with your mouse and drag. Uh, so you've gone from this image, which I'll put it into a JPEG just to make it a little bit easier. So we've gone from this to this. <laughs> and then, as you can see, quite a lot of difference. Very, very.